나중에 커가지고요 받은 거를 다른 어려운 사람들한테 배포 로봇스 화이팅! A poor girl who was once praised on TV for taking care of her disabled parents is now a suspected murderer. This mystery has been a talk in Korea and it's just resurfaced. There's new video, rare videos that surface that could be the key to opening up the truth of what happened to Mr. Yoon. If you were taking a mini vacation at the valley, would you really not have noticed your husband or friend drowning? In early 2020, a woman wrote to an investigation program, 그것이 알고 싶다, or Unanswered Questions. She wanted the show to talk about her unfair treatments from the insurance company after a family tragedy. The woman was named Lee. She was 28 years old back then in 2019. And she claimed that her husband, Mr. Yoon, who was 39 at the time, died of an accidental drowning while they were with their friends having fun at the valley. She was entitled to up to $800,000 of insurance money Money, but the company denied her claims and she was claiming that the insurance company was threatening them and this was unfair they were doing unlawful things basically the insurance company claiming insurance fraud so it was June 2019 when the couple and their friends decided to go on like a mini vacation to the valleys this is a really popular getaways that a lot of Koreans go to you could have Korean barbecue go swimming go diving I mean it's like a really relaxing place for a lot of people to enjoy there were five other people that joined so two sets of couple and a guy named Joe all of them minus Mr. Yoon was in their late 20s so they had about 11 12 years of age difference and I'll tell Tell you why this is important in a little bit so they arrived at the valley Sunday 3 p.m started to eat and then later on played in the water it eventually became dark and the boys only the men three men minus one of the guys decided to go dive in the rocks this is a picture of exactly where they decided to dive from one by one dove including mr yoon According to Lee, she says that after they all dove, they saw everybody's heads come up and she thought that, okay, cool, fine, and then turned around for just a second, only to realize later that Yoon never came out of the water. According to Lee, she never heard or saw Yoon gasping for air or splashing or yelling at all. She says that when they turned around, the water was calm and he was just nowhere to be seen. They did call for help and it was approximately 30 minutes after Yoon was missing that help arrived. Unfortunately, by then it was too late and Mr. Yoon passed away from drowning. Autopsy also confirmed that he died of drowning and it was ruled as an accident. So this is the basic story of what happened according to Miss Lee. But something isn't really adding up about this couple. If you dig deeper into Lee and use marriage, it is so bizarre. I've never really heard of married couple that acted like this. So Lee and Yoon got married in March 2017. They did not have an official wedding. They did take these wedding photos and only got legally married. They had an 11 year age gap, so I believe she was around 25, 26 years old when she got married. And Yoon used a lot of his money to manage to get a newlywed apartment for them to live in. As soon as they got married, both of them decided to apply for life insurance. And Yoon had a life insurance in case of death, the spouse would receive up to $800,000. Now this is technically considered a very high, high insurance. He had about four like different insurances under his name, so so they were paying about $700 a month and that is a lot of money that's like a high insurance for people who are able to pay it according to Lee they've been dating four years prior to getting married so it kind of like tells you that they were really close to each other they were really tight they really loved each other I think but the interesting part is they lived apart so Lee was living in their newlywed home and Yoon was living in a cheap basement villa Yoon seemed to support most of their lifestyle and it was said that he worked at a big corporation job and his salary was $60,000 a year, which is considered pretty good in Korea. But according to Yoon's family and friends, their relationship was very cold 
distance and people couldn't comprehend because they lived apart and they never really saw each other. But within just one year of marriage, Yoon filed for self-bankruptcy. His account was literally drained in just one year. According to Yoon's friends, they claimed that Yoon actually had around three hundred to four hundred thousand dollars saved up and he was actually working since he was very young in his early 20s so he was better off than most of his friends his age but his friend was a little bit baffled when Yoon asked him to borrow $500 randomly. I mean, this was a man who made good salary and had a lot of money saved up, so why would he need to borrow money from his friends? If you see these photos, it seems a little uncomfortable. I mean, you could tell the body language, like she's just huddled up. There's a couple of photos with them and you can never tell if they're a real couple or not. They seem more like friends. Even more shockingly, there's text messages between Yoon and Lee. And Yoon texts Lee, if you get any money, please buy your husband glasses and sneakers. My shoes are ripped. It's a little embarrassing. I sent all my salary this month to so-and-so. I don't have anything. Please just send me $10. I need food and water. I don't have anywhere to borrow money. I'm really hungry. In another incident, he says, please help me pay for the electric bills. In another text, he says, please send me just samcheon or around $3. I just need one meal and one bottle of water. And you could just see his bank account slowly running out of money and just growing in debt. And it seems like Yoon was literally giving all his salary, all his saved up money to his wife. I mean, this is so weird and something that a lot of people don't understand because how do you give all of your money to the point where you will have to ask your wife for $3 just for water and food? Here's a recorded conversation between Yoon and Lee. Yoon, in a calm, friendly voice, is wishing his wife Happy New Year's. If you guys don't speak Korean, I don't know if you could still tell the tone in her voice, but you could just tell she does not want to talk to this guy. Like, she's like annoyed. She just hung up really quickly. I mean, it's New Year's, you haven't seen your husband, they live separately, and it seems like he's just trying his best to get through to his cold wife. It was three years into the marriage now and she always claimed that she was too busy to see him and even frequently not picking up his phone calls. And later on, we will find out that according to some of the friends, especially the people that went to the valley with them, they actually didn't even know that she was married. She even introduced Yoon, her husband, as a close oppa, a close person that she knows to most of her friends. They had absolutely no skinship, no touching with each other, like... And it was noted that Yoon just had incredible unconditional love for his wife. He just still really loved her no matter what she said. No matter how many times she did not see him, he just really still, I don't know if I should use the word infatuated or just his patience just never really ran out with her. I know in a way it sounds like too much of a nice guy, but we will get down to the bottom of this in just a little bit. So this is where the crazy mystery begins, so buckle up. So it was actually, I believe, a family of Mr. Yoon that led for the insurance to block the payment to Miss Lee. Because the family claimed that it was suspicious that he would go diving when he actually doesn't even know how to swim. Nor let alone he was the type of person to really enjoy outdoor activities. So here's a version of what happened in the valley that day according to the witness that was there and she was actually one of the girlfriends of the male that was there. So she remembers that throughout the day they were doing a bunch of like dares and they were making Mr. Yoon do things that was kind of uncomfortable. So at one point at night when it got dark, the two men decided to go diving from the rocks. Lee then said, Oppa, to her husband Yoon, all the boys are diving, you do it too. He strongly said no because he's very afraid of water, he doesn't know how to swim. So eventually she grabbed a life vest saying, fine, I'll do it. That's when Yoon said, no, no, fine, I'll just do it. So everybody remembers that Mr. Yoon jumped last, so nobody pushed him. The female also remembers him coming to the surface, turned around for a moment, then heard a loud yell, which is a little different than what Lee was claiming because she claimed that there was silence. She then claims that she saw Joe with a tube trying to swim towards Yoon. 
but because he was swimming so slow due to the tube she was yelling at him to take it off like go faster like throw the tube or something once he took off the tube lee grabbed her and said let's go get another one and then they went up to the rocks a little bit so she didn't see what was going on within that couple seconds or minutes they came back with the tube and saw joe standing in another part of water from where yoon was last seen he was yelling i don't see him i don't see him hung where are you to her and according to all the witnesses it was clearly an accident there was no way that there was any foul play so shortly after this is when they called for help and unfortunately it was too late so who is this joe guy he was another 27 28 year old who was supposed to be just a friend of lee but according to their friends they were actually boyfriend and girlfriends, Lee and Joe. Again, they later found out that Yoon was actually her husband. So, so everybody was confused. Like, what is going on? Like, what is this weird relationship? Why are you bringing your husband and your boyfriend to hang out at the valley all simultaneously? From what we know right now, it seems like Lee told Yoon that Joe was just her friend. So later on, we find out that C, who was one of the guys who dove with them and who was the boyfriend of the female witness, he was actually very close to Lee and he introduced Joe to Lee in 2015. The two men who dove with Mr. Yoon and who were all at the valley, they are all weirdly connected somehow. There's also a CCTV of the day where Yoon is being picked up by Lee with his car while Joe was actually in the driver's seat. He was the one driving. So weird. I'm just thinking what Mr. Yoon was going through. Like you're having your wife being picked up by her close friend with your car coming to the basement that you live in and you guys are all going to some party mini vacation together that's just so awkward and people are wondering if mr yoon really knew of their secret relationship or not i mean how could he not but at the same time he was just so in love with her that i think he gave so many benefits of the doubt so this is a former girlfriend of Joe, and she remembers an odd incident where they all went on a fishing trip together. Police believe this was another possible attempt by Lee and Joe trying to end Yoon's life. This incident happened before this ex-girlfriend A found out that he was cheating on her with Lee. The two couple went on a fishing trip where they were going to stay the night. As soon as they got there, they all started to drink and Lee and Yoon throughout the whole night would bicker and argue with each other. She claims that anytime Mr. Yoon wanted to act like a couple, such as holding hands, Lee would get angry and tell him to go away. They absolutely did not act like the usual romantic couple. At one point, Lee told Yoon and Joe to go and have a guy's talk while the girls had their girls' time, as Lee claimed that she urgently needed to tell A something. The girls went inside the room and Lee didn't speak a word. She had nothing to say to A. A claims that this was very odd because she clearly said she wanted to have a girls talk. And a couple minutes later, Yoon wanted to come back inside of the room because it was really cold. This happened in the middle of winter. Lee then blocks the door and gets aggressive, telling him to stay outside with Joe a little more, but Yoon refused. Lee then went outside. A heard everyone just arguing and heard kerfuffles outside. She says that 10 to 20 minutes later, she heard someone falling into the water. She heard a loud splash. Then Lee just bolted into the room telling her, don't go outside, don't go outside, nothing's happening. The girlfriend was asking, what's going on? I just heard someone fall, is everything okay? And Lee was just like holding on to her, telling her to not go outside. The girlfriend knew something was weird, so she just bolted outside and that's when she saw Mr. Yoon just like yelling and her boyfriend Joe was grabbing onto him, staring blankly into the space. When the girlfriend was yelling, what are you guys doing? What are you doing, Joe? She says that he was making some odd noises and her boyfriend wasn't responding, just staring blank into space. And eventually they swimmed back and she was just like, what the hell is going on? Like, are you possessed or something? When they came out of the water, Yoon started to yell, Lee, you pushed me. Lee said, no, what are you talking about? And the couple started to argue about other times when he thought that she did something to him. It was just a weird negative trip that this ex-girlfriend remembers. When this witness statement came forward, police soon realized that there were two different incidents when it seemed like Lee 
was planning to murder her husband, Yoon. The first encounter was in February 2019. There's actually text messages of her sending to Joe, I fed a lot of blowfish blood in his food. Why isn't he dying? The second incident of her possibly trying to murder her husband was this time during the fishing trip. Some theories of why the fishing trip encounter was so bizarre to this ex-girlfriend was because they believe that Lee pushed Yoon inside the water, Joe got in the water with him and was trying to hold him down inside the water. But this plan failed because the ex-girlfriend went outside, witnessed the whole thing. And by the time that Joe probably heard his girlfriend screaming and yelling, what are they doing? He was probably staring blank into the space because the plan was to possibly drown Yoon. Just two days after Mr. Yoon passed, there's CCTV footages of Lee and Joe going inside Mr. Yoon's basement apartment. Both of them were still wearing their funeral clothings. They go inside and 40 minutes later, she comes out just grabbing a jacket. The next day, Joe is seen with another female going into Yoon's apartment, this time grabbing the whole computer. Why is he entering the house and not let alone the family or at least Miss Lee? And what was inside the computer that they desperately wanted to take? When police went inside Mr. Yoon's apartment, one thing that's really sad that they found was that there were a lot of contracts for different apartments that he was in debt for that they were constantly asking him to pay. And even papers applying for personal bankruptcy in 2018. I mean, he was in a lot of debt that he was supposed to pay for. And recent evidence that Mr. Yoon all this time for three years was sending his own money up to $30,000 to Lee's friends. The insurance company says that his life insurance was active and inactive multiple times because they were not able to make the payment. Their insurance payment every month was around $700. I mean, he couldn't even eat. Not only that, but coincidentally, because he wasn't really paying for his life insurance, it was set to expire on July 1st, one day before Mr. Yoon passed away. So finally, three years after the incident, there was a new rare videos that was released to the public. And this just tells such a different story of what happened that day and how much fear that Mr. Yoon actually had of water and how the friends were treating Mr. Yoon. In the video, you see two men, which is Joe and C. Yes, the two men who also dove with Mr. Yoon later, playing around, pulling the victim's tube farther into the deep end. C starts to shake the tube, then it gradually gets rougher and rougher. At one point, the guy is holding on to the tube and you see the victim trying to pull away his hands. He tries to swim away, but then they come back and try to pull his tube again. You also see Mr. Yoon trying to cover his ears like he's terrified. And in the recording, he says, let's stop. Joe then says, no, I won't stop. Mr. Yoon says, I'll apologize. It's now childish. It's not fun anymore. More, please stop. Lee's voice is then heard in the background and she says, hey so-and-so, go flip the tube together. You could generally tell that Mr. Yu was not enjoying this. I mean, some people might see this and be like, oh, they're just playing around, like whatever. But if you think about it, Mr. Yoon is like almost four. He was 40, basically. And the fact that these grown men are trying to like submerge someone into the water, like it's funny, like they're like 10 years old. It just seemed so rough and weird for them to do that. And earlier I said that the age difference between Mr. Yoon and the rest of the people were around 11 to 12 years of age difference. And this is important because in Korea, someone that much older is considered like young, or like as a senior and the junior kind of respect boundaries that we have in Asia. The fact that, that they were treating this young, this older person as like a toy to play around with when he clearly said to stop, just seemed so uncomfortable for a lot of people to watch. In another footage, the friends claimed that they had no knife to cut open a watermelon. So they did rock, scissors, papers, and scissors, dare, and whoever loses had to open the watermelon with their head. Yeah, cracking a watermelon with your bare head. It seems like Mr. Yoon lost the game and he's seen trying to open it. You could clearly tell that he was in pain and it's not really a funny joke anymore. But then Lee yells, Opa, you gotta hit it harder, oh my god. And it seems like they made him do it over and over again until it actually opened and not as a joke. I mean, he was the oldest and they were in their 20s and you could just tell the vibe it was just not mixing. I mean, not that you can't hang out with people just because you're 40 and they're in their 20s. Like you could just tell the person 
personality and who Mr. Yoon was versus all these other people that was there. Their personality, their vibes just did not mix and it was as if they were just silently picking on this poor guy. And maybe they thought that, you know, they could push him around because he was just so nice and he didn't really say no or stuck up for himself. And people believe that because his wife was there and he wanted to show that manly nice side of him and trying to like appeal to his wife that he went through with all these dares even if he really didn't want to. It was as if he was trying desperately to hang out and fit in with these cool kids all because of his wife. So police called Lee and Joe for a second interview regarding Mr. Yoon's death. And as of right now, both of them are missing. They've been missing for four months. They have not been using their credit cards and their phones and they cannot be tracked. That's one of the reasons why this case is blowing up right now because there's a public want. So in Korea, there is a big privacy law and they can't even disclose like the face and sometimes the name of suspects. So when there's a public wanted sign, like, you know, that's like a big case. Not only them, but C is also named as one of the suspects and you clearly see him being possibly involved. I mean, he was the one roughly shaking Yoon's tube. But the question is, I mean, why would Joe and C be involved in this? I mean, what would they get out of trying to potentially murder Mr. Yoon? Lee could have manipulated her friends, especially Joe and C, to make them believe that Yoon, her husband, was just a stupid, nice guy that they could just push around and nobody would know because she was up till now able to get every last piece of penny from Mr. Yoon and he did everything that she asked for. And shockingly, there's evidences that Yoon sent around $200,000 to Lee's account where she ended up sending that money to Joe and her other family members account. This is like getting my blood boiling like, I'm just trying to wrap my head around this. Like what was Mr. Yoon thinking? Like what was his mind going through? Through. like how much did he really love her in the autopsy they also actually found foam in his lungs and according to the professionals they claim that this happens when the person is gasping for air and taking in water at the same time a clear indication that he had to be going up and down inside the water and out so it goes against Lee's claims that it was just absolutely silent so he had to be yelling and screaming for help and like splashing water but it is crazy how especially like the female witness she says that it just seemed like an accident and i'm also thinking if this was really pre-planned how did they execute this i mean they had other witnesses they had their girlfriends there who i mean they really would have to hold the victim down on their water for a long time and to make it not suspicious for the other people to find out that they're actually holding someone down in the water so a lot of people are thinking like how are they also able to execute this before Mr. Yoon passed, he wrote in his phone like a diary of how tired he was with Lee treating him so badly. He wrote, she probably will never come to my funeral because she's always busy. And at first, before all these claims surfaced, you know, people were claiming that he did this to himself because he was in a lot of debt and that, you know, he left a note for everyone to read after he passed. But isn't it weird that Miss Lee just never really wanted to see her husband or even really contact him, but only when they're going out to have a mini vacation with their friends, she would invite him. It's just like so weird. So Miss Lee is just getting pooped on by the media and that is says people are just digging through her past and who she really is and she just has a really really complicated strange past especially when it comes to her love life. Since she was 15 she was caught by the police multiple times of having a chokkan mannam which is arranged meeting for probably monetary exchanges if you know what I'm talking about. Also while dating Yoon in 2015 she marries another man that breaks up right away. Not sure if Mr. Yoon knew about that, but probably not. She also has one child from a previous relationship, so she is a mother as well. Then in 2017, she gets married to Mr. Yoon. 
Even more weird and suspicious, it is reported that in 2014, Miss Lee went to Thailand for a vacation with her ex-boyfriend, where her ex-boyfriend died drowning while snorkeling together. It was ruled as an accident back then, but because of now, they're re-investigating into this case if Miss Lee actually had something else to do with this. But as of right now, um, the family of this ex-boyfriend claims that she did not receive any insurance money, so there isn't enough information that she did this out of some kind of benefits. There's also a rumor out there that another ex died in the presence of Miss Lee in a car crash, but this seems to be a rumor so far the police cannot find any information about this. Even more shockingly, I feel like I said this many times, when Lee was just in the sixth grade, she was actually in a TV program where, you know, it's a TV program where they help poor families reconstruct and build their house for them for free of charge. So Lee actually came from a very poor family and both of her parents were disabled. Back then, she was praised as the girl who was taking care of her disabled parents living in poverty and people had a lot of sympathy for her. <laughs> So ironic, right? Someone that wanted to help other poor people ends up taking money and making other people poor. Some people say that because Lee grew up in a poor family taking care of her disabled parents, somewhere along the way, like her thought process just changed. It seemed like maybe she got so tired of helping out the poor, she didn't want to work for it anymore. She found out ways to manipulate people to get quick money and that's what it exactly it seems like she did and it seems like for lee what drives her is just money it's like monetary reasons for anything maybe she has some kind of a sob story that she told yoon and other people and, and mr yoon just happened to be such a nice giving guy that he really fell for her traps a lot of people are wondering like what do they see in this girl like how seductive does she have to be you to fall in love with someone and like a girl asking you to to help murder your own husband like like what was the exchange was she giving him so much love to joe that he he was just in on this what was in this girl that she was able to use so many men to get what she wanted isn't it really funny, crazy, and so evil how she literally called the biggest show in Korea in order to get her money? She literally potentially murdered and killed her husband and called the biggest show in Korea to look over her quote case so that she could get her money. Literally A to Z, her life, everything is about getting money. And she wanted that insurance paycheck even after she killed her husband. Regarding Mr. Yoon, professionals say that it seems like Mr. Yoon was so afraid of his wife leaving him that he had to use what she loved, money, in order to win her love over. It was as if Mr. Yoon was completely dominated and prisoned by Miss Lee's and psychological torture. And a lot of people say, well, why didn't he run away? Why didn't he break up? Blah, blah, blah. For people who have met people with certain type of manipulation and gaslighting, you just know, don't know how bad you have it. Until it ends and you just take a step back and you're like, whoa, this is wrong. People are wondering though, even if they get caught, do they actually have enough evidence to charge them for murder for that specific Valley incident? Because technically, according to other witnesses, nobody pushed him or like made him jump in. They really have to find out if, you know, someone held him underwater and if it was planned, how they really executed the whole thing. Is there any physical proof and evidence? I think it's really important that even if it's your family, your close friends, you need to know how to say no and stand up to yourself. Someone guilt tripping you and asking you for a lot of money when it's your own and when you say no, they all of a sudden get offended. That is absolutely wrong. You never want to be tamed by someone to that degree. Remember to like this video, share, and if you happen to see these people, call the Korean police. Thank you so much for watching and see you guys in my next video.